Hi everyone, it is May and I'm back doing face to camera because I actually have some things to talk about this month. So to start with, May is my birthday month. It was my birthday on May the 12th and I'm likely going to go visit my family but we do have some trips planned to kind of celebrate my birthday which I'm very excited about. Importantly, May is usually a very busy month for me. For starters, it's Mermaid, which is a challenge for the month that people do where they draw mermaids, uh, sometimes based off prompts, sometimes based off their own things. And I have participated in it before. In 2020, I did the half marathon, which filled up like about a third of my sketchbook that year. And last year I did three images and one of them I'm still really proud of and is one of like my portfolio pieces. I love mermaids. I wanted to be a mermaid when I was a kid. When The Little Mermaid 2 came out, it was like my life goal is to be a mermaid. I do want to draw some mermaids at some point, but I'm definitely not doing a half marathon. I'm definitely not going to focus all my energy on it because there are other things I need to do. For example, the plan for today is to start a Draw With Me sketchbook spread about my trip to Falling Water back in March, because I said at the end of that video I would be doing a sketchbook spread Draw With Me style video where I draw some specific scenes from the trip itself. I would like to do some landscape studies from some of the video footage I got because we had the Sahara Desert storm sunset thing where the sunset was really intense and I just really want to capture some of that and also just other landscapes and trips I've been on where I've got all these photos and never done anything with them and just actually updating my landscape portfolio which actually brings me quite nicely onto portfolio. With turning 29 I'm kind of looking at where I am in my life and I'm honestly quite happy with where I am but professionally I want to be elsewhere and I'm looking at my portfolio and I'm going this is not quite it. At the moment it's about increasing my landscape, my portraits more so than anything else, but also my fantasy side as well. But this is like alongside everything else I want to do. So things like just stuff to create for myself, stuff to do for videos, stuff to maybe sell as prints, like the stuff I would do for my store, which I do have, um, would probably be a bit different to my portfolio work. And one of my hobbies has started up again, uh, live role playing, and I play a character who is doing quite a political push at the moment, and a lot of it is backed up by some of the art I'm doing. Not to mention another reason why May is usually busy is because in summer, my other job kind of picks up again. So I am actually a wedding photographer alongside being an illustrator and people tend to get married in summer. I have to focus more time on doing wedding photography and going through the photos afterwards, which means less time on doing art. May kind of really has to pick up and sort of set me ahead for the summer. So this is my very intense May and I aim to be taking you along for it. Alongside obviously some fun bits I intend to do, like I say I am going away a little bit for my birthday, we're going to London, we're going to see one of my favourite bands, uh, The Midnight Live, I've seen them twice before, this is the third time I'm seeing them, and visiting my family and hopefully we're going to be visiting a place that I've never actually been to despite living really nearby it. Hopefully that'll be in the video. And also what I've kind of realised is all these things I've said, if I don't do it I can just edit it out of the video like a coward. <laughs> yeah, I hope you enjoyed this month's vlog.
Right, so this is us on the way back from London and we stopped off at a little place called Toaster. And honestly, I think the Americans have it right saying Towcester because I find it so hard to not say Toaster. So it was a blooming gorgeous day. So we stopped off, had a look around the town and went to a meadow nearby and just sat and enjoyed the kind of late spring sun really. And I adored the bounding little dog on screen at the moment and the dog with it who was clearly much older and just plodding along and honestly this place was so full of dogs and I was just having the best time. I absolutely adore dogs. But yeah, it was so nice to be out in the countryside, out where there was so much lush greens that it was like super warm and we could just vibe really. <laughs> We went to this super adorable little cafe where I had full lunch pancakes with biscoff and banana and it was delicious and I loved every bite of it. At home now and I was doing some line art for the live role playing piece I was doing whilst listening to podcasts and watching a Kanye West documentary of all things. To briefly explain where my character is from in the game, their artwork is inspired by stained glass and mosaics, so I try to make my art reflect that when I'm doing stuff for the live role-playing game. And back at the salon with the adorable dog getting my hair cut shorter. I'm mostly cutting it shorter now because I really want to grow out my natural colour, the kind of salt and pepper greys going on. And yeah, we'll see how that looks once it grows out. So this is the day before my birthday and it was the first of a few of the May burnouts. As you may have seen at the start of the video I had a lot of plans and at this point I was kind of going oh my goodness I don't think I can do all of this and I really had a lot I wanted to do on this day and I just had to go no just do something for you and I drew the salon dog and the salon saw it and loved it and were like can we have a copy of this? So. That's actually something else I need to do is I need to get on getting them a copy but that's something I'm really happy about and it was a nice chill day just painting what I wanted to paint rather than forcing myself to do something because I need to do it in a certain amount of time. And I got super inspired by my little Korok in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in my plant pot and decided to paint it using the plant as an umbrella. And it was my birthday. I decided to take a walk to one of the parks near me and just paint there, just have some fun being outside and painting. And it was a really lovely day, a little, a little too lovely in places. I think I got a bit burnt, but you know what? It was just really nice to just sit back outside again and just be one with everything around me and just observe things, you know? There was a lot I wanted to get and I think would have been better than the stuff I ultimately chose to paint but I also wanted to make sure I was sitting somewhere out of the way given that I was going to be there for some time. Then I desperately needed to go somewhere where there was a seat with a back so I chose to paint a tree that was very well lit and decided to not show any of the painting process and just show the kind of afterwards part that I did so um, have that mystery I suppose. Also, the brown smudge is the remnants of a fly that I tried to gently bat off my paper and yeah, an accident happened. I'm sorry. Rip fly. Then it was time to go home and indulge in the most important part of a birthday, which is tasty cake and presents. 
and my housemate made this cake for me because they are the best and it was like this Genoese sponge and chocolatey and it was gorgeous and here's some of my present haul we had planned to have some drinks with some of my friends but unfortunately they had the plague so we brought them some cake and we were rewarded by seeing a lovely cat before visiting my parents I decided to cover the remnants of the fly with the wrapping paper from my housemates because this whole sketchbook spread was becoming a kind of birthday themed spread so it seemed like the right place to do it. So it was time to go home and visit my parents, mostly to get presents of them of course and nah, it was to see my family and to spend some time with them and celebrate me because I'm great. And considering how stressed I've been before my birthday, this was everything I needed. It was such a lovely day. It was so warm and chilled out. And this is me and my brother's partner trying to explain to my other brother's partner what the plot of the Rocky Horror Picture Show is, as she'd never seen it before. And one of my brothers made pizza for us with like homemade dough and it was so tasty. And we decided, show me what's Eurovision? And went, yeah, that's what's Eurovision, which was a great decision because it was the best Eurovision ever. Uh, yeah, just everything I needed. It was such a good day. Now this is me visiting the rock houses at Kimber, which isn't too many miles away from where my family live. And it's a place I've never been to just by growing up near the area. And I said to my mum, hey, I really want to go visit this place. And we did. I got this really lovely Studio Ghibli vibe from it and I really want to create some art pieces inspired by this as I do every time I go somewhere nice but you know I really want to create something from this or create characters that would live in a place like this and finding out about it was so fascinating. And of course, I wanted to sit and paint some of it, you know, be totally immersed in the place and get yeah, money's worth from visiting. There weren't too many places for me to sit and paint without being in the way. So we found this table and I actually really liked getting this window like in this kind of natural nook and cranny, which the whole thing was really. And here I am on my last night at home testing out the 80s watercolour palette from Choosing Keeping that my brother and his partner got for me for my birthday. I've had my eye on this palette for some time and I'm super excited to create some artwork inspired by it. So here I'm putting up my poster from the band I went to see. And it's amazing how quickly we forget being a teenager and having anime and band posters all up in my room and forgetting that they just pop off the wall if you don't flatten them for a bit. Here I am opening some packages. The candles and the zine are things I bought for myself but the package from Sugar and Sloth is a late birthday present slash care package for one of my friends. And I also did another painting of the rock houses this time with reference and a bit more time and I quite like it. dog ate my shoe and I've come in pretty strong there and I wish I was joking but no a dog ate my shoe <laughs> so the story is my friends who were delivering cake to um they have a gym in their house I have a shoulder injury we were there and I was like mm, this this ain't it I'm gonna just injure myself further so we left and I was in the living room I was like why is my shoe in the living room and their dog their lovely lovely dog diesel 
had dommed on my shoe. It's a bit of an issue. Okay, so I was being a little dramatic, like, there's still an entire shoe. So this is what the shoe's meant to look like, this is the shoe looks like. And you know what? It's fine, like, of all things, it's just funny. <laughs> I am gonna get them repaired, like, it's just the tongue bit, and I'm either gonna, like, get, like, a contrasting colour put in, or, like, change both of them. I'm gonna see what a cobbler can do. But it's it's funny, because these are the shoes that I show off in my video the most. Like, if I'm wearing them, I always try and get a shot of the shoes. If and I think I've got it a couple of times in this vlog already. It's fine. It's fine. I need to get some new trainers anyway. The reason why I was wearing them is because the trainers I usually wear, and the trainers I tend to wear all the time, are, like, eight years old and they've worn to the point that they're now actually quite uncomfortable especially since i actually have a bit of a funky walk um i kind of swing my right leg out and the sole has kind of gone in a diagonal line if they've also got a hole in them because they caught fire one time <laughs> we're over halfway through the month now and i'm gonna do a bit of a catch up I i'm just gonna go through this Mermaid, two to three images, haven't done any of that. Draw with me spread film, I've done half of that and I'm feeling a bit mm, about it, like it's not my favourite one I've done. That's good squares, haven't done that. Portraits, haven't done that. Book of Briar's Peace, that is my live role playing stuff, which I'll get to in a second. Finish Guild page, I haven't done that, but that won't take me long, I have like two people to paint. So the plan is today to get some headway on this. You'll see me working on it throughout the video. I haven't shown you with this painting process yet. There's a lot of elements in this and I kind of know I won't be able to focus on anything else until I get this done. I do have other things I want to do. So as you'll have seen, I got this 80s palette uh, for my birthday and I want to do a piece using just these paints. Like I did with the 50s palette, which are these colours uh, for my brother. In fact, it was my br the same brother who got me these paints as well. And I can kind of do something based off the band I saw because they have a very 80s vibe to them. That is a thing I would like to do, but the key thing is to finish this. Doing some landscapes is the thing I really want to do and possibly do a fantasy piece which brings all the elements together. Right? Let's go. Right, I'm back after that brief musical interlude, so I thought I'd chat about what I'm doing here. This is me fulfilling a promise to myself to do landscape studies, especially studies based off video footage I've done. And yeah, after completing that kind of giant stained glass inspired piece, I was like, okay, I'm going to do something a bit more relaxed and just do some experiments, do some paintings of some landscapes, which I do genuinely enjoy doing. The one on the screen now is probably the one I like the best, and out of people I've shown, is probably the 
overwhelming favourite for people. And I get it. It's colourful. It's got a nice path in it. It's kind of fantastical. It's a lot of things I like, really, in a picture. All of this was about doing studies and experimenting a bit, but safe experiments. Like, I'm using watercolour. I'm using a bit of gouache. I'm using pencil cranes. These are my mediums, you know? I did find I was struggling with the paper a bit. This is some paper I got for Christmas and it's decent but it does buckle quite hard when I'm painting which leads to some messy areas which I did notice and tried to fix a bit. I, that's often what I'm using pencil crayons for is fixing those areas but it could be disheartening to know something would work but just the paper buckled and I know there's ways to fix. I know you can stretch paper and stuff but there's kind of like this, I shouldn't have to, you know, it's watercolour paper, it's meant to be able to take it. But anyway, that's just my own beef with watercolour paper. It's why you'll often see me painting on a watercolour block where the edges are glued down. But because this was just studies, I just went in like a sketch pad, really. And yeah, for studies, it's fine, even though the buckling paper was annoying sometimes. Okay, so um, check it in because I'm struggling a little bit at the moment. The past couple of days have been very difficult. I've been having some mental health problems and it is mostly to do with my work. I've found that a lot of stuff I've done this month is stuff I don't like. The past couple of days it's been really hard to rationalise that even though I know, uh, I know, I know rationally what is happening and this is why I filmed this it's kind of known as the Adam H. Grimes or Adam Grimes graph of perception and skill. So the concept is that as you start something, you kind of do a nice curve upwards, you're gaining new skills very quickly, you're absorbing a lot, your mind's like a sponge. As you get better, it would be nice if we just kind of plateaued and we sort of, not even plateau, but the, the curve just go a little bit more horizontal. Like you know what's happening, you're not gaining as much skills because you're kind of refining what you have but the truth is is we kind of plateau and then we do sudden jumps it's rarely ever like a nice curve at the same time our perception of what is good changes based on our knowledge so as you start out you don't know what's good as you refine what you know and you become better your perception of what is good goes above your skill level and when you have those jumps um, when you have those plateaus you're still learning but you can't apply it and the distance between what you can do and what you know feels broader which is when you feel like you're not improving you can't do anything it's something that's good to recognize i knew this was happening when i was feeling really sad and you know even now that i'm going ah i know what's happening my perception of what is good is above what i can do but it, it feels broader and it fe it's a very hard stage to overcome. And as you become more masterful in your craft, the gap isn't as big because there's a lot more coexisting with what you think is good and what you can do. There will be times when you're actually very close to what your skill and perception of what is good is. But as you, as you hit that, it's going to change. And right now, what I'm producing isn't what I want to produce. It's not what I like it's not it's not me and that's a shame because I've done this work people like it also they tell me but I don't like it and I'm like it'd be so much easier if I just liked it yeah I could I could stand to be a little bit easier on myself but everyone who knows me is just kind of going yes I'm gonna constantly be learning and developing my skills and even things that don't work are a part of that. It just feels very disheartening when it keeps happening. I'm busy, I haven't got time for failed experiments. I just have to take, I think, the rest of the month as it goes because, as I mentioned at the start of my video, June is busy. My other job starts up again, I need to focus more time on that and I just kind of wish I could have had a bit more of a success in May like and just produce more work I liked but say la vie I uh, don't mean for this to be a downer I want it to be educational and show the authenticity of like the always fun adventures and drawing and cake it is also a struggle sometimes and 
part of the journey and it's how we improve but oh boy could could do without it right now so after all that i gave myself a relatively easy task to do which was finishing off a sketchbook page of some characters from a game the reason why it had taken me so long is because one of these 0.3 pens i used wasn't water resistant so i decided to test all the ones in my little pen jar and just run water over them and see which one was the treacherous pen and it was this pen and I pointed at it accusingly and threw it away and then immediately rescued it because I don't want to waste things and took something off my to-do list. Then I went to York because there was a exhibition on that was finishing up relatively soon and I really really wanted to go and see it. So the specific exhibition I wanted to see was Beyond Bloomsbury, which is about the Bloomsbury group, which I didn't really know all that much about and then came away learning loads about it. Although I'm not going to repeat it here because that's just going to test my knowledge and I'm going to get something wrong. But they were a very influential group, had a lot of forward thinking views in terms of LGBT rights and feminism and yeah they were pretty awesome but something i liked about the exhibition itself was it wasn't afraid to criticize some of their less than savory views that deserve to be criticized and it also had a space called querying the burton where the lgbt society of york put some lgbt themed images up which i did a lot of sketches of and i also did a sketch from the beyond bloomsbury part of the exhibition and it was overall a fantastic day and exactly what I needed to just kind of get some inspiration back. And then I went on a date in a lovely restaurant in York, one we hadn't been to before when we lived here and the sunset on the journey home was, was so, so beautiful. So I came back and my scroller box had arrived and I wasn't really feeling the energy to do anything from my plan to do list so I decided to test the supplies and I was quite interested in them because they are watercolours on pigment sheets which I do actually already own from a different scroller box but I really loved the texture on these ones and the different patterns they created and weirdly that they were stamped i liked how they felt like they could belong in a fantasy game much like the games i go to so i decided to paint my character at the game empire who i plan to play after my current character not that i wanted to go anytime soon and the pigment pages were fine i did find that they made my hands very grubby but i already own some pigment pages that are in in a little folder with resistant pages between them and I might see if I can kind of fashion something like that for this character or for a more transportable option. Last part now, this is me doing a study from the Bloomsbury Group exhibition. As you can see it's by Roger Fry, it's called Quarry Bow Peep Farm Sussex and this is one I was doing with my pastel colours from Derwent. It was from a scroll box from February I believe and yeah i just really loved the colors on this piece and wanted to try and do something with these paints in fact when i saw the picture i was like i really want to recreate this with these paints the text that came with this piece in the gallery said it was painted during a particular difficult time during roger fry's life and when you look at what happened and what was going on in the bloomsbury group you're like who boy yes and considering i am feeling pretty low at the moment and right now i'm just constantly feeling very tired and a bit stressed about the coming month i thought why not do this kind of lovely light colorful piece and share in those feelings for a moment i didn't have a way to round out this video like i usually do so have some footage of me sitting on my bed reading a zine drinking some tea and just looking a little melancholy and hey if you want to cheer this melancholy person up why don't you like comment and subscribe but only if you want to like no pressure and if you have i'll see you next month for my june video take care everyone <laughs> bye